going. Welcome to day 85. Uh, right now, I hope you're really enjoying your Kairos retreat. I wish I could be there with you guys. Um, but a good welcome home present is some more calculus to learn. So welcome back. Um, today, we're looking at day 85, volume of a revolved region. Okay, This is going to be a little bit tough to visualize and tough to set up, but the integrals themselves should be relatively easy to do. So let's take a look at this initial question here. It says, the region bounded by y equals root x, x equals 4, and the x-axis is, is revolved around the x-axis. Find the volume. So what I want to do first here is get an idea of what this looks like. So let's just do a little sketch. Here's what we have. My y-axis, my x-axis. Uh, so the function is y equals square root of x. So that's going to look something like this. Here's y equals root x. I also have the function, the vertical line, x equals 4. So 1, 2, 4. That's a vertical line here at 4. And I have the other bound is the x-axis, so just right here. So here is my region right here. I'll just kind of shade it in here. There is my region right there. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking that red region there and we're revolving it around the x-axis to create a solid. Okay? So what I want you to imagine is that red is a piece of is like a piece of paper. Right? This it's a two-dimensional shape lying flat on the table. And what we're going to do is that region is going to revolve around the x-axis. So imagine this red region right, lying flat on a table, and then it flips all the way around the x-axis back to where it is. Right? So if we think about this, it's going to look a little bit like this. Right? It's going to, so I'll just take this point right here. It's going to three-dimensionally curve all the way around back to where it was. Think about what shape that would look like. Well, it would kind of look like a maybe like a little bit like a bell or kind of like a thimble, but it's a solid figure, solid all the way through. Okay. I have an animation to show you um, in a second if you're having trouble visualizing that. Or it kind of looks like a bullet, right? Imagine a, a bullet from a gun. That's kind of what this thing looks like. And what we want to do is we want to find the volume of this bullet. Okay. Well, finding the area of the region would be easy. Right? We're used to that. It would just be the integral from 0 to 4 of root x dx. But now we want to find this volume. So what I want you to do is imagine this solid. Imagine cutting one of these little pieces out of the middle. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut a slice. So a slice here through it and a slice right next to it. A really thin slice. And I'm going to pull that slice out, and I'm going to slap it right here. I want you to think, what shape is that slice going to look like? Well, it's going to look just like a circle, because this thing was revolved. Okay? And it's got a little thickness to it, but I cut it as thin as I could. Imagine this thing like a, like a roast beef at Arby's, and you just took a slice of it. Right? And that slice is a circle. Okay? So what I know is that the distance from here to here matches with the distance from here to here. Right? Those two things match each other. 
So this circle has a radius. And depending on where I cut my slice, the radius, right? If I cut my slice close to the close to the front here, I'd have a really small circle with a small radius. But if I cut back here, I'd have a bigger circle with a bigger radius. Okay? And this radius is constantly changing, right? If I cut this into a bunch of circles, no two circles would be the same. Again, they'd be small circles down here, disks. I'm going to call them disks. There's little medium disks here and big disks out here. Okay? But what I know is that the radius there of that circle is always equal to, it depends on what x value I'm at, and that radius is always equal to the function there, which is the square root of x. So the radius of this one disk is always equal to root x, right? Whatever x is, right? So this circle that's way at the end here, that would have a radius of 2. The very first circle right at the beginning would have a radius of 0, right? At 1, this circle has a radius of 1. But the radius wherever I pull from is always equal to the square root of whatever x value I'm at. Okay? So the radius is just going to be the function root x here. Okay? Now what I'm doing is I cut this thing with a thickness, right? But I want to cut it really, 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 really small. So for a really small number, I'm going to call it dx. Its thickness is dx. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add up the volumes of all those little disks. I'm going to sum them from starting at 0 and finishing at 4, right? And the volume of all those little disks added together needs to equal the volume of the whole thing, which is what I'm trying to solve. Okay. So my question is, what is the volume of this disk? Well, it's a cylinder, right? So I have to do the area of the base times its thickness, dx. Well, the area of the shape, right? The area of the shape is a circle, so it's simply pi r squared. So the volume must be pi r squared times the thickness, which right here is dx. So the volume of this whole shape, then, is going to be the integral from my left point, right here, which is 0, to, my, to the right end, which is 4, of pi r squared dx. But think, I know what r is. I know the radius here is always equal to root x. So I'm going to say my volume equals the integral from 0 to 4 of pi root x. Okay, I'm just subbing in for what my radius was. My radius here was the function root x, but I'm squaring that. And this integral will give me the exact volume of that region. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solve it up. This is the easy part. Well, this pi, I'm just going to put out front. And I want to simplify this definite integral before I actually do the definite integral. Root x squared. Root x squared has to be just regular old x. dx. Now I'm ready to bump and divide. So my volume is going to be pi. I'll use my bracket now since I'm doing the antiderivative. The antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. I bump the power up to 2 and divide by 2, so I get 1 half. And I'm going to keep writing this pi over and over again, so my volume is going to be pi. I'm going to have, I have half times 4 squared minus half times 0 squared. Well, nicely, this whole thing is going to be 0. 4 squared is 16. Half of 16 is 8, so my volume is exactly 8. Okay. Let me show you another example with that. 
let's say now my function is y equals x squared. The vertical line x equals 3. Or no, let's do x equals, sorry, x equals 5 and the x-axis. And once again, I'm going to revolve this around the x-axis. So here's my function. Uh, I also need a, a bound of the y-axis. I'm only going to work with quadrant 1 here. So here's what y equals x squared looks like just in quadrant 1. So this is x squared. Here's my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my vertical line at 5. And this is the region I'm talking about. So again, I'm taking this thing and I'm revolving it around the x-axis. This shape is going to look like some kind of horn, or if you guys have ever played the game Sorry, it kind of looks like a, a piece from that. It's going to look something like this. So, or maybe like a Hershey kiss. It's going to kind of look like a Hershey kiss if you can visualize that. Again, I want to find the region bounded. I'm going to revolve it around the x axis. Now, again, what I want to do is I want to pull out just a slice. What is my radius going to equal now? Well, my radius, again, all the circles have different radii, but they're always equal to x squared. So I'm just going to sum from 0 to 5, and I'm going to do pi r squared for my area of my circle. I'll put the pi out front. My radius is x squared, but it's pi r squared, so it's x squared squared. Yep. Yeah. Right, dx for this thickness here. This integral will give me the volume of that Hershey kiss. So I want to simple, I want to take a step to simplify here. X squared squared is x to the fourth. Now I'm ready to bump and divide. I'll use my brackets. I get 1 fifth x to the fifth. Again, from 0 to 5. Now all i got to do is plug in 5 and plug in 0. So i got 1 fifth 5 to the fifth minus 1 fifth 0 to the fifth. I have to figure out what 5 to the 5th is. Okay, that's going to be a pretty big number. But if I think about this, this is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, right? 5 times. But one of those 5s is going to cancel with one of these 5s. So really, this is just going to be 5 to the 4th. Well, it's a little easier to calculate. I know 5 cubed is 125, so I'm just going to do 125 times 5. Uh, that's 10, 12. So I know my volume here, this is going to be 0, is going to be 625 pi. Okay. So that's what happens when we revolve a region around the x-axis. But notice all of these functions have had um, x, the x-axis as one of its bounds. So it's creating a solid figure. Okay? What I want you to think about is it won't always be a solid figure. Sometimes there will be um, some hollow points in there. So I want to show you this. This will be in the video. Uh, um, or this, We're going to solve this problem here. 
Well, I want us to think about the function y equals root x, the function x equals 4, and the function y equals 1 tenth x. Okay? And I just want to give you a visual here. So three-dimensionally, this, this animation is a little bit better. I'll include the link to this YouTube video in, um, in the comments so you can see what this looks like. But here's what it looks like. So there's our root x. Here comes y equals one-tenth x. It's also going to have a y-intercept of zero. And here comes the vertical line x equals four. So the region there is that red region. And watch what happens when it revolves around. Here's the shape it makes. It kind of looks like the bullet we had from problem from the first example, but notice how it's hollow there. So when we slice out that disk and flip it around, notice that this disk has a hole, so it's kind of like a washer. Okay? It's got some thickness, but we, we cut it so it's really, really, really thin. Okay? So just to give you a visual on that, now let's go ahead and solve this problem. So again, I'll just do that sketch. Here's root x. Here's one-tenth x. And here's my vertical line, x equals 4. And here's a, that region. Okay? And again, that region is being revolved around the x-axis. But as you notice, it doesn't make a solid disk. It makes what I like to call a washer. Right? If you've ever done any construction kind of stuff, assembling things, we know that we have here a washer. Okay? So this is going to be just slightly different then the disk, right? We're not just going to have pi r squared anymore. Because there are two different radii here. What I want you to do is label the big one big radius. Now, what function is tied to that big radius here? Well, it's the upper function, which is root x. So our big radius here is root x. What about this little radius here? I'm going to use little r like we're used to for radius. Well, what function is tied to the little radius? Again, it's different everywhere on there, but it always equals one-tenth x. So what I want to do now is come up with an area of this washer and then multiply it by the thickness dx. So how do I find the area of this washer? Well, that's just the area of the big circle subtracting away the area of the little circle. So that would be pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Okay? So our volume, I'm going to I'm going to factor out the pi and I'm going to have big r squared minus little r squared dx for the thickness x. Okay? But again, I don't want r's and x's mixed here. I know big r is root x and I know little r is 1 tenth x. So my volume is going to be pi root x squared minus one tenth x. That whole quantity is squared. So to find the total volume of this hollow bullet here, I'm going to do the integral from zero to four. I'm going to take this pi and write it out front. And I'm going to have root x squared, which I know is x, minus 1 tenth x squared, 
Well, one tenth x times one tenth x is one one hundredth x squared. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to bump and divide. My volume is going to be pi times this is going to be one half x squared minus, I'm going to bump it up to x cubed and divide by three. One, one, one hundredth divided by three is one three hundredth. From zero to four. Now all I got to do is plug in four and plug in zero. So my volume is going to be pi, one half four squared minus one three hundredth four cubed minus plugging in zero. Well, I know that's going to make it zero. Okay, four squared is 16, 16 divided by two is eight. So my volume is pi times eight minus four cubed is 64. So I have 64 over 300. Okay. So I could simplify that 64 over 300, but just to make life easy, I'm gonna call this eight over one. I'm going to make a common denominator of 300. 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 times 300 would be 2400. So my volume is pi, 2400 over 300, minus 64 over 300. Okay. 2400, oops. Minus 64. All right, I'm going to borrow 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. And so I get 2336. Okay. And that reduces. Um, I'm just going to use my calculator to do this quick so I can end it. And my fraction that it reduces to is 5e for pi over 75. And that would be the final volume. Sometimes we get some crazy weird answers here what their exact answers for the volume of that region. That's it for today. Don't worry, we'll practice this a lot. It'll become easier and easier as we go. See you guys on Monday when you get back. Two chains, bye.